Hello, this is part two of the polished platform controller. And what we're going to do today is do the sliding. So you can see that if we hit into it, it will stop us, but we can slide underneath it. So let's go to the old project. So what you'll notice is I've made it, I've just edited the part one scene. So I've just made it so that we can't run through this object. Also, you'll notice that there was a bug previously. It was originally 0.01. What I want you to do is change that to 0 0.1. One, and that'll make sure that the, um, the squash stretch isn't so bad. So you'll notice now it's a lot quicker, it's more smoother. Also, you'll notice we get it looks like we're getting grabbed by the platform. I'll resolve that as well. So let's get into it. So, what I want to do first is I want to edit the player. And what I want to do with the player is I want to give him an, another collider. So, we're going to go to the attached node on the player. I'm going to go to the collision shape 2D. I'm going to call this slide shape and call it rectangle. And what we want to do is we'll just move this down and I'll make it so it's about this big. In fact, we'll come back to that as well. So let's move that up just beneath collision shape. And I want to call this stand shape. And then what we're going to do next is put in the animation. Oops, you can see I already got it, but I'll do it again. Ah, oh, don't do that. <laughs> Oopsie. So this is what you'll have. So let's make a new one. And you'll notice that I've already got the art. Uh, this isn't in project uh, part one, but it is in part two. So go up on GitHub if you need it. And then what I'm going to do is. I like it, grab it in, and as you can see, it's sliding. So we'll make this a little bit bigger. Brilliant, about there. Um, what we want to do is disable the slide shape because we only want one collision shape active at one time. Obviously, if we're sliding underneath something, then our stand shape will dis be disabled. So we're going to put the animation back to its default, which is at idle. And you can kind of tell what's going to happen here when we're sliding. This will be enabled, this will be disabled, and vice versa when we're sliding. Oh, uh, standing back again. So we'll save that. What we're going to do as well is go to the project, project settings, input map, and we're going to do the same as jump, but this time to the slide. We're going to put in the key, I'm going to use control, and I'm going to put in a joypad button because I use the Xbox control pad, and it will be X. Like that, close it, brilliant. Save. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the code and we're going to go to the top and we're going to find three new variables. So we're going to these are for the sliding. So we're going to export export var uh, slide friction equals four hundred and I'm going to have some down here. But var this sliding oops, is a bool equals false. Are we sliding? Var hump slide. Can we slide? Save that. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom. Oops. And I'm going to put in a function and call handle layer collision shapes. I'm going to say if is sliding and slide shape dot oops if even that's not much really. let me just check this if that's correct yep so I'm saying hey are we sliding but are uh, slide shape is currently disabled. Oh, we've got to also define the actual shape. So I'm trying to call to a node, but we don't know that yet. So let's go to the top and let's go here. And I'm going to say on ready var um, stand shape equals our stand. Do the same again. Push slide shape equals. 
touch it and now we can go to the bottom and then it'll be there. Ooh. So I want to say sand shape dot disabled equals true because we are sliding. Then slide shape disabled is false. Yeah, so we're just so it's inverted, so it's messing my brain. So obviously we we're no longer sliding, but it's false, which means it's actually enabled. So yeah, I was that was confusing me a little bit. Else, if is sliding and stand shape up disabled, so we're saying hey, we're not sliding. But our stand shape is currently disabled, which is that's not how it should be. So it should be stand shape disabled equals false. So it's now true. Stand shape is no longer is no longer enabled. So it's true. So this is gonna be ooh, that's this spot on. So this is gonna be constantly looked at. It's like hey. I, are we are we always looking to see if which shapes on and off? So let's go to the top, and we're probably going to put this in handle import probably here. Um, handle logic for our collision shapes at all times. There we go. Perfect. So I want to do some checking if for the actual logic off the slides because right now all we're doing is saying hey if, if it's true if it's false then disable and enable collision ships but we don't have any logic to determine when we're sliding so what we're going to do is go to the script and what was it called again it was called check sliding logic and I'm going to go down to the bottom here move that and move that Boom. Check sliding logic. I'm going to say check if it's possible to slide if ABS H speed is greater than max horizontal speed minus one and ground is enabled. So this is saying if our speed is moving either left or right, which is absolution, more so than our uh, max horizontal speed minus one. So basically if we're at max speed going either left or right and we're touching the ground, it means that we can slide. So we'd say, oh yeah, if we're not sliding, then we can slide. Oops, true. I'll just do it on one line. Else, can else we're not in any of the so we're not in any of we don't match this condition to slide so we can't slide equals false. Check if we're holding down the slide key button. If can slide. So it checks the state above us. And import dot is action press. It's important that it's is action press, not x action just press, because just press is just a single tap of the button. Is action press is when you're holding down a button. And we'll to slide. And we'll say it is sliding equals true. What else is, is sliding is true and is oh sorry that's not right no that is right oh. it's cans so we can no longer slide because we are currently sliding Oops. check if we're sliding but just released slide key. If is sliding 
and we are no longer holding down the slide is action pressed slide so are we sliding yes we are but we're no longer holding down the slide key so we shouldn't be sliding anymore is sliding equals false now we're going to do the animation logic so do your animation and friction logic because our friction is going to change when we're sliding obviously we want to have less friction so we can actually slide and when we return to our standing uh, standing state we want our friction to be more strong so let's go and say if we are sliding and we're currently touching the ground then our current friction equals slide friction reduce our friction for our slide and then we're going to also play the uh, animation of the slide else current friction equals friction which is our default one now I probably should rename friction to standing friction that would be more sensical but I've kind of just kind of I've committed now so bear with me it would just mean changing it everywhere else and I don't want to do that in this tutorial but do you feel free to do that yourself this sliding is now false because we're no longer sliding great Save that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our handle movement movement here and you'll probably notice a few things what I'm going to have to do. Now I'm going to resolve the sticking into things which feel is really weird so the way to do that is if we're going to say if is on wall so this is checking that if a wall is touching us from the left or the right, we're going to reduce our vertical speed, sorry, our horizontal speed. Even. Yes, <laughs> equals zero, and also motion.x equals zero. So what's happening there is, is what's happening previously is when we touched a wall, our vertical, sorry, our horizontal speed was still being applied. And obviously, so it would be so. Say if we go into the right, it was at seven, and when we press to the left, it was t took a while to go from seven to minus seven. Now it should have been as soon as you hit the wall to your right, it should be at zero straight away, and then you could instantly move the opposite way. So that's that resolved. Now what we're going to do is we don't want to be running a turning when we're currently sliding, so we're going to say put these in its own parent. Whoops. Parentheses. Um, and not sliding. Let me just make sure that's correct. Yep, and is not sliding. Is so and not sliding. Same again. And we're not sliding. And don't forget to do this part. Is a really long, long lines. Cool. Let me just make sure that's right. And now, right at the bottom, we're going to go to the else part. So, this is basically what's going to happen is else is going to be called at all times when we are sliding, and this is going to be the algorithm that kind of uh, slides us to a stop. Now you'll see that our current friction now will be either our sliding friction or our standing friction depending on is slide. Now we need to do a little bit of code here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go if we are not sliding then we know we, are, we can be idle and that's going to be idle to a stop else we are sliding if apps h speed is less than 0 0.2 then we want to say animation stop because 
So let me explain this a little bit better. So if absolute speed of h speed, so if we're going minus 7 or um, minus 7 or 7, it's going to be 7. And what this is going to do is we're going to check if we're going left or right, and if, if th that speed is sm slower than 0 0.2, it means we've come to a stop. We don't want to be doing the animation of the slide because obviously you've stopped, so it's, it's the animation would look weird. So we're going to stop the animation. And also, what we're going to do is animation frame equals one. And the reason I'm doing that is just that the fr the animation frame will have his hood pointing down. Obviously, if you stop, you don't want your hood pointing upwards because obviously gravity doesn't work that way. <laughs> we um, well, I did check ground logic, check sliding logic. This needs to be called all times. Obviously, I wasn't calling it all times, so let me just see where I can put this that makes sense. Handle input. Sorry about that. And now check out. There we go. And you'll notice that we we can't let me make it make it bigger. Now you'll notice actually the slides are a little bit long. So what I'm gonna do is go back, go to the player, and I'm just gonna mess around with slides. So I'm gonna call this slide fiction. It's probably four hundred. Yeah, okay, I don't mind that. Maybe six hundred. Yeah, I prefer that. So you can just mess around with with stuff like with this way you can have it sliding forever really. And the great thing about having exported variables is that you can mess about with them on the fly without having to start, stop, start, stop. And that's the whole reason why I've done this. And now it allows you to build the platform that you want to make. Like it doesn't have to be a carbon copy of this one, of the controls of this one. So this concludes part two. Um, let's go to the to-do list. I'm decided that I'm going to make an enemy uh, patrol platform so it'll go back and forth along the platform and it'll check for walls and edges so that's going to be part three and also we're going to check if the player touches an enemy if it does he dies and the, the game rest well the, the level restarts so expect that in part three and I hope to see you there take care bye bye